No one knows precisely uh, how these psychiatric medications uh, act. We don't know if I give you a medication, if it is going to work or not. It's not a great deal of scientific support for using them. I myself, I try to pick a drug whose side effects might be useful. You have to choose what is the best option. We don't have uh, sure methods. There are no rules. Everything is, it's an art, really. Often it's trial and error. It's a kind of a trial and error. It's uh, trial and error. Some degree of trial and error, I guess. A blind man's bluff or something like that. You never know if it's the right drug. It's a much more complex uh, subject. There's always going to be huge surprises, and that, that's what makes it so difficult. The best psychiatrists in the world will mess up all the time. The American public is being treated as a mass medical experiment. We are all being treated like guinea pigs by the pharmaceutical companies, the psychiatric industry, and the FDA. They are basically testing drugs on large parts of the population uh, without really knowing what the results are going to be. It's a very dire situation that we're facing. We're talking about people's health and in many situations, people's lives. These are very serious issues. As dangerous chemical compounds, psychotropic drugs are tightly regulated by governments throughout the world. And for any new psychotropic drug to be approved for use, it must undergo tests intended to protect the public. When a pharmaceutical company develops a new drug that they want to send to the market, what they do is they have to run it through clinical trials. They have to be able to provide to the FDA safety data to say this is a safe and effective drug. In clinical trials, uh, psychiatrists are engaged to do the research. And we could bank on the fact that these psychiatrists are tied to the pharmaceutical companies. And the psychiatrist puts their name on there, they're seen as an expert, talking mental drugs, who writes them, it's psychiatrists. So that's how it works. It's a terrible system. The desperate thing about it is that it's all dressed up in the name of science. But it's not science at all, it's, it's pure marketing. Uh, but they get away with it because it's called science. There's really no test, no x-ray, there's no chemistry that shows you have this condition. It's really just the opinion of someone who is probably taking money from pharmaceutical companies to prescribe drugs to people. Where's the biochemistry? Where's the research? Where's the substantiation? And the answer is it vaporizes like mist in the morning. It's not there. But the lack of scientific testing doesn't stop psychiatrists from carrying out clinical trials on dangerous drugs. Clinical trials are supposed to consist of four phases of precise scientific drug testing the first three of which must be submitted to governments for regulatory approval. In phase one, the drug is checked for toxicity. In phase two, tests are done to see how the drug reacts in the human body. If it clears this hurdle, then a phase three trial is carried out. But with no lab tests verifying or measuring any mental disorder, and with big money at stake, psychiatric drug research is highly subjective and rife with manipulation. There are many, many, many places where you can tweak the study just a little bit with the study design or with the way you gather the data or the way the data are reported. And there's so many different ways you could bias a study. I've seen what they did to the data in these trials. There's no question that they manipulated the data. For example, let's say they had 100 people to start with, 40% drop out, 30% have a positive response, 30% have no response, they then say that they have a 50% response rate, when in fact most of us would say it's a 30% response rate because only 30 out of the original 100 really responded. And so you can see that that's a little bit of a manipulation of the research data. When they design drug studies, they're only looking at the one thing they want to they see. And they don't report all the other things that are happening. Case in point, the antidepressant Cymbalta. Lily, I believe, in February of 2004, did a clinical trial study. The people in this clinical trial did not have symptoms of depression. And in that clinical trial, there were 11 attempted suicides and four suicides completed, one of which was Tracy Johnson, 19-year-old college girl. She did not have any symptoms of depression, and yet this drug pushed her to commit suicide by hanging herself. 
that shoots the theory down that they say that, you know, people get suicidal because of the, you know, underlying illness that people kill themselves, that these weren't suicidal people to begin with. These weren't depressed at all. These were healthy people. A slew of media coverage followed, but psychiatrists on the FDA drug evaluation panel chose to ignore the death and went on to approve Cymbalta the following August. One of the reasons why we have underestimated the potential of some psychiatric uh, antidepressant drugs to actually trigger a suicidal kind of behavior in people is because the people who designed the research study didn't include in the research questionnaire the suicidal behavior. And then you can report that we had zero incidence of this type of behavior among our subjects. And then the response is trumpeted as if there's something magical about it, when in fact what's happened is a whole statistical tap dance routine that violates good science. However, on the basis of that kind of phony trial, the drug can be marketed. Keep in mind that when a drug is tested in the clinical trials, it's only a very short period of time. The final phase of testing can be anywhere from five to six weeks. The longest of those studies was eight weeks. The shortest was four weeks. So these are not long-term studies. I think most physicians and most people taking the drugs assume they're long-term, one-year, two-year, three-year studies. They're not. They're very, very short studies. I find it pretty outrageous that we can base a multi-billion dollar industry on a few six or eight week clinical trials where antidepressant medications beat a sugar pill by a few percentage points. It is on the basis of biased research such as this that psychotropics with potentially fatal side effects